and welcome to Used Car Heaven. Coming up on the programme this week, we're going to help a young couple choose a new car. We'll find out exactly what they're looking for soon, but we've picked out three likely candidates. The VW Bora, the VW Golf GTI and the Astra SXi. So Becky and Pete, you're after a new car at the moment. What do you drive currently? Uh, Renault Megane Coupe. And what don't you like about that or why are you looking to change really? Well we like it, it's just um, we're having a baby and it's only got two doors so it's a bit impractical really. So you're looking for something with practicality but you're not, onto a, you're not moving on to an estate or anything like that? No. Not yet. <laughs> That's still to come. No, we, we don't want something too family-ish. We still want something sporty. But with five doors yes. or four doors, maybe. Yeah. So, what are your, you know, first impressions of the Vauxhall Astra? What do you reckon to this, Pete? Looks all right. Um, nice car. This is the S SXI, so yeah. it's a 1.8 yeah. engine as well. So it's got a bit of performance. That's it. Yeah. One or two nice sporty features inside the dials, and the, as you'll see in a bit, nice seats, alloy wheels. First impressions are reasonably favourable. Yeah, reasonably fair. Yeah, it's uh, see how it drives as well. See what it goes like. What about you, Becky? Do you like Vauxhall Astras first off? Yeah, looks it looks Not okay. Not bad. Yeah. I mean, what about badges? Are you worried about you know a Vauxhall badge on the front, or are you looking for something a bit more image conscious, maybe? <laughs> I'm not too bothered. You're not either. too bothered. <laughs> You're not after a Ferrari anyway. <laughs> no. Well, the Golf GTI is a pretty good badge, so let's go and have a look at that. Okay. Right here we are with the icon that is the Golf GTI. It's got a 20-valve turbo engine under the bonnet, so it's going to be quick going to be a good performer with this but it's practical as well it's five doors and inside nice Recaro seats now this is a T-Rage car I mean what sort of money first of all have you got to spend on, on a car uh, around nine thousand pounds around nine thousand yeah. pounds okay you might stretch maybe a little more if it's the right car um, yeah possibly. possibly okay well the Astra was eight and a half now this is slightly more expensive and it's a bit older but yeah. Golfs do hold their value very well it's done a bit more mileage. What sort of age of car is the Megane at the moment? It's a V. A V Reg. Yeah. Now this is a T, as you can see. Yeah. So it's a little bit older. Would that bother you? Not really, no. 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 If it's the right car, you're, yeah. you're happy to go for it. OK. Well, first impressions of the Golf. Do you like it? I do like it. I do it's like nice. it. It's nice. I mean, it's got a nice solid feel to it, as you'll, yeah. as you'll see when you drive it. And as I say, it's got a good engine under the bonnet yeah. too. But you could go for the booted version of the Golf, which is the Bora, which is over there. Let's go and have a look at that. Now, you're probably not too surprised to learn that the Golf is the most expensive of the three cars that we're going to look at, around about ten and a half grand. But this is a slightly cheaper option, the VW Bora. It's essentially a booted Golf. So it's only got four doors. Is that a problem, first of all, do you reckon? No, I mean, the big boot is good, really. Yeah, you're not necessarily yeah. looking for a hatchback. Not, not necessarily. No. no? OK. Well, what about colours? Because it's in a fairly bright blue. Well, this is a nice colour. You like this, do I you? I do, yeah. Well, I like it as well, but a lot of people are probably put off by it. And yeah. It might affect the, you know, the price that you'd have to pay for it. But if you're not bothered about it, that's good. It's done 28,000 miles. It's a two litre and it's an automatic. Right. What about that? It's not a problem, automatic. I've had one before. You've had, one, you've had an yeah. auto before, so you're used to it. And for around town, life's yeah. a doddle in one of yeah. these, isn't it? I mean, what are your impressions of the Bora? Do you like it as much as the Golf, do you reckon? Probably like the Golf a bit more. Do you? Yeah. What, <laughs> what's swaying you towards that? It just looks a bit more sporty. Looks a bit more sporty. <laughs> well, yeah, I can see that. I mean, it's got a nice interior, this as yeah. well. And it's, it's a low mileage car. It'll last for ages and it'll hold its value well too. Right. So let's go and have a drive of them. OK. So the VW Golf, I mean, just look at it. It looks fantastic and it's got brilliant build quality. And in the market sector, its rivals would die to have a car produced as well as this. Some have got close, but not managed to quite match the Golf but it's got that all-important badge on the back. And this is the badge, the GTI badge. Yes, the Golf GTI. It's been around for years and years, but now, well, it's maybe put on a bit of weight. It's a little chubby around here, but it's still a darn good car. Now, this is a 1.8 20-valve turbo GTI 
When it was new, this would have cost over £18,000. It's a five-door Model 2, so extra practicality. But now it would sell, three years on, for around about £10,500. Now, it's holding its residual value very well over all those years. You're probably looking Group 14, 15 insurance for this particular model, so it's not cheap on that either. Right, this is the Golf 1.8 turbo new this car 17,000 pounds obviously in the second hand price it's reflected being a little bit more expensive than the other two that you're looking at I'm not sure whether it feels quite as planted as the Astra on the corners it feels firmer in a straight line when you're going over a bump it feels yeah. firmer but in the corner it, it probably is holding the road as well you just can't I don't think you can body feel roll. it as well there's a, there's a little bit of body roll on them yeah um, it's a bit of a taller car and it's a bit of a heavier car than the Vauxhall. Yeah. So it's it's probably got to compensate a little bit with, with that within the suspension and the body and everything. Yeah. It's the image thing with this though, isn't it really? The Volkswagen. More than anything else. Yeah, the Volkswagen Golf has got a fantastic image. It, it, all the way from, from younger people to even old men of 70, you know, they like yeah. the image that the, the Volkswagen Golf, and certainly the GTI, portrays. Right, it's comfy. I have to say the seats are really comfy. It's the city. <laughs> These sporty ones. They, they do hold quite well, don't yeah. they? When you do go around corners, you're not, you're not rolling about all over the place in them. So whilst Becky and Pete mull over the possibility of a Volkswagen Golf, I think it's time to get medical in the shape of our car doctor. Yes, it's Simon Hughes back in the surgery. Ah, the trusty old Ford Maverick, you're probably thinking. And it is trusty because it's based on the Nissan Torano. They're very, very good. They're very hardy. They last a long time. And they're excellent for bombing around town and also for going caravanning and things like that. But they do have one or two problems from time to time. And one of which is with the petrol engine, the timing chain can become noisy. And if you're wondering what this is, it's not actually part of a Ford or a Nissan, but we've brought it along just to show you what a timing chain is. Now then, we've got the camshaft and the crankshaft here, and they're connected by this chain as opposed to a timing belt. And as you can see, when it gets a bit of wear in it, that tends to rattle around a little bit and creates a horrendous noise. Now, this can cause serious problems because it can't be changed whilst the engine is in the car and it becomes very expensive to do the job in that the parts to actually repair your Nissan uh, or Ford engine once it gets noisy will only cost about £160 but because the engine has got to come out of the vehicle and it's a major strip down you're talking about 750 quid overall to repair it. Now I don't want you to start panicking because of this thinking that your wheels are going to start dropping off or your engine's going to drop out or anything like that but being aware of the fact that it could cost lots of money is very useful so that you don't end up in a, uh, an expensive situation that is avoidable. Um, there's nothing you can do to actually prevent it other than regular servicing but mainly just if you do get the noise coming on you're aware of it and you can maybe start planning ahead and saving uh, to have the job done later on. Thanks Simon, and there'll be more medical matters with the car doctor at the same time next week here on Used Car Heaven. A couple of weeks ago on Used Car Heaven, we pleasantly surprised Emma, our first viewer of this new series, at just how good the Vauxhall Astra is. These cars were introduced in 1998, 
So they've been around for a few years now, there are plenty on the used market, but even nearly new examples like this are getting seriously cheap. Eight and a half thousand pounds for this Y-Reg 1.8 SXI. When it was new, it cost around about 15 grand. Sure, it doesn't hold its value as well as either the Bora or the Golf, but you do get a lot of car for your money, as I'm sure that Pete and Becky will find out. It's 134 brake horsepower in it, so over 1.8, it's quite a powerful 1.8 engine. It feels quicker than Megan. Megan's only a 1.4 that I've got, so it's obviously quicker than that. Um, the handling as well is a bit sharp and the suspension is not, yeah. as, not as tight on the Megane. It feels about the same build quality, it may be a little bit better. The only difference being the, wing, the electric wing mirrors in the Megane, that's about it. The yeah. only difference really. I do like it, it's a bit more powerful than the Megane to drive. At the time when this car was released was the car that they had to put a maximum amount of effort in and when they designed and built this car it was it was from scratch they had to really put a lot of effort into it just so they could get competitive with the marketplace Well, that's all for part one of Used Car Heaven. Join us again very soon when Becky and Pete get a chance to drive more cars. Richard Hammond is here with an alternative and we'll get their final verdict all on the way. Hello and welcome back to part two of Used Car Heaven. On this week's programme, our lucky viewers are Becky and Pete who are looking for a small to medium sized hatchback. We've lined up three fantastic cars for them and they'll get a chance to drive the third car soon. But before that, here's Richard Hammond with an alternative suggestion. So, Becky and Pete, what you wanted was swoopy coupe good looks, but at the same time some genuine practicality, so four or even five doors would be good. Also, you wanted those nice sporty touches, quite a mixture. And you wanted an impressive badge. Well, I can't promise for this money a Ferrari, but Seat, not bad. They've got a sporty, spicy Spanish reputation, backed up, of course, by Volkswagen's legendary reliability. Now, it may not be the most interesting part of the car to start with, but it is worth noting that underneath here, it is based on the same underpinnings as you'll find beneath the excellent VW Golf as well as the Audi A3, the Skoda Octavia, and in fact, half of the current car market. Take a quick look under your toaster and you'll probably find that's based on the VW Golf Platform 2. It is this combination of Spanish flair and German sensibility that has allowed Seat to build a reputation for being sporty and still immensely practical. For instance, take a look at that boot space. Compare that to your again. It's massive! Now, whilst this particular car is finished in a quite sensible and sombre dark blue, Seat have built a reputation for some pretty garish exterior paint finishes. I'm talking bright yellow and fluorescent green here, so you're going to have to be feeling pretty brave. But one thing they haven't built a reputation for is building equally garish interiors. They tend, if anything, to be rather dark and gloomy. But we're back to that build quality because it is fantastic in here. It feels very much like a, a cut price Audi, which is great news as a second hand buy because it means it should show very few, if any, signs of wear and tear. And then finally, 
there's your sportiness. Well, this is the Leon 20 valve with a 1.8 litre engine, 125 brake horsepower, 0 to 16 in respectable 10 and a bit seconds. But take it from me, it is a good drive. There's loads of grip, it's quite involving, and it feels as solid as a rock, which it is. On your budget, you'd be able to afford a Seat Leon 20 valve like this, a year 2000 car on an X-plate. And it's good to think that you can have a little bit of Spanish flair, but still at heart, no, you're actually being quite sensible. Thanks, Richard. We'll find out later on in the programme whether Becky and Pete like the idea of that car. It's a real mystery why VW's Bora has never taken off in this country. It just doesn't sell in big numbers, and I don't understand why. I mean, is this car ugly? Is it horrid? Doesn't look like it is to me. It looks a smart four-door executive saloon. Sure, it's not particularly cheap at 17 and a half grand new, but at nine and a half thousand pounds as a used example for this two or three-year-old car, seems very good value for money. It's got lots of stuff on it, twin airbags, stereo system, it's an automatic gearbox too, and it's got air conditioning. Plus, it's got an enormous boot on the back. I mean, just take a look in the back of that. How about that? Fantastic. Some people prefer saloons to hatchbacks, as Pete and Becky may well find out. So what do you think about the handling and performance on this in comparison to the other two that you've tried? It doesn't feel too bad. Obviously, the suspension's not as hard, so it's uh, a lot comfier over the bumps. When you get in the corners, it, it tends to wallow. Wallers round it, so like there's a lot of roll on it compared to the other two. And how do you find the performance on it with it being an auto as opposed to the manual? It tends to pick up all right though. If you if you floor it, it'll drop down and pick up. So the engine doesn't feel too bad with it being an automatic as well. Obviously, it's the two litre as opposed to the 1.8 turbo. It's quite a bit of performance with the two litre engine in these. It'll be decision time for Becky and Pete very soon, but before that, we need to check out some more insider tips about buying a used car. Here's the trading post. Once you're happy with the exterior, it's time to move on to the interior, see what stories this has got for us. First thing I normally do is check the uh, mileage, make sure all the digits are straight and they're not out of line. When you're happy with that, check for the general wear and tear. I always check around the steering wheel. For example, this has done 40,000 miles. Steering wheel's nice. It's not smooth and bald and shiny. So that generally means the car's done a lot of mileage. Same with the gear stick. Make sure that's not all smooth and shiny. And the seat, especially the backrest, that's normally where they get in and out. When you get in and out of the car, that's where it's gonna wear. So make sure that that's not worn through. If it's got holes in it, you can guarantee it's probably done 100,000 miles plus. Same with the pedals, make sure they've not worn through. Seat belt, if that's all frayed, then that's uh, a sign of high mileage. If your car's showing any signs of these and it's showing low mileage, then it's obviously done a lot more, so just be careful of that. And electrical things, as electric windows, roof, central locking, electric mirrors, make sure all these are working because they can become quite expensive to replace. And once you're uh, happy with that, then um, we'll go and uh, look at the thing that does the work, the engine, but we'll be looking at that next week.
and there'll be more insider tips on the trading post at the same time next week here on News Car Heaven. But now it's that all important time of the programme. It's decision time. Now, a couple of weeks ago, Becky, you and your boyfriend Pete came along. You had a drive of the three cars that we selected. We've given you a bit of time to ponder because mm. you weren't quite sure. No. But now we want a decision off you. <laughs> so let's just run through quickly the three cars and just recap them. First of all, the Golf GTI, two litre. Yep. Did you like this? I did like it. You did? It's very nice. Mm. But it's not got quite as much room as we'd, as we'd need, really, yeah. with the baby and the pram. And, and with it being a three door, it's not ideal, it's, is it? It's not that practical. You really wouldn't no. want to be. <laughs> <laughs> reaching out in the back no. and uh, the baby seat and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, I mean it's nice. Um, it's great to drive, isn't it? It is. It is great to drive. It's, it's slightly too expensive though as well, really. Yeah, they're not cheap these cars, no. are they? But it leads us on to the second car, which is the booted version of the Golf, the VW Bora. Now it's a sport model. It's an automatic. It's a two-liter engine. It's more practical than the Golf. It is. But did you like it? Not really, no. Mm. Um, because it was an automatic, it was a lot slower at setting off and things. And yeah. And it's a bit too family-ish to me. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you want a family car, you don't quite want a we family want car. We want something that's still a bit sporty. I know what you still, mean. You know, I mean, you've got the Megane Coupe at the moment, so you're looking have. for something a little yeah. bit different, I suppose, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. And maybe this is a bit too bland for you. Well, yeah, it is really. It was cheaper than the Golf. It was. But that still wouldn't attract you to it. No, no, and the Pete didn't like it at all. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> <laughs> right, third car then. Now I suspect I know where you're going with this because this is the good old Vauxhall Astra. Now, it comes in for a lot of criticism this car has been a bit dull and a bit bland and a bit boring. But I mean, the car that you drove was the SXI. Yeah. Did you like it? We did like it. It was fairly sporty. Still has enough room for everything that we need. Not too family-ish. Not family -ish. too family-ish. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, I think, you've, I think you make a good decision if you buy this car. Well, we have in fact decided have that you? we're You're going, going to go buy for the an Astra. Astra. Yeah. Good choice. Uh, five doors, so there's bags of room in it. Yeah. Cheaper than the Golf as well. It is slightly cheaper and cheaper on insurance as well, which is quite a big thing. Big thing, thing absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think you will make a good decision with that. I think it's a good car, cracking car. Yeah. Becky, thanks again for your time today. Okay. And that's it for this week's used car. Heaven will be back at the same time next week.